first 911 that really went racing was in 1967. And I was responsible for it. Because I'd just been through, in 1966, I'd been through three years with Ford, the last of which was a pretty disastrous year. And I then, toward the end of 66, I'd seen the 911 a couple of times in private hands. There was no official entry, nothing. But Baron Huschke von Hanstein, who was then the Porsche competition manager, I went to see him before the end of 66, and I said, look, this car I know is going to be a winner. I want to drive it. And he said, well, the problem is we have no rally budget. I was a rally driver specifically then before we were racing. We have no rally budget. We have no rally department. Uh, Ferdinand Pierre is not even interested in rallies, which he wasn't at that time. So I'm afraid you know nothing. So I said, I'll tell you what, Hushka, lend me one. Just lend me a 911 to go for the Tour of Corsica at the end of the year. And, he's, and I'll show you what I'm sure this car is going to be able to do. So he said, OK, I'll lend you a car. That's it, a car, a couple of mechanics and a little service. That's it, no money, no practice car, no expenses. You do it all on your own. So, I, you know, it was costing me quite a bit of money to do that because I wasn't, none of us made a lot of money in those days. Uh, there was the risk involved. More to the point, uh, all the press and those who had driven 911s at that time said the car is a monster, it oversteers, it crashes backwards at the, uh, at the certain mere sight of a corner. So I knew I was going to have to learn to drive it as well. And the Tour of Corsica was literally 24 hours. It used to be known as the Rally of 10,000 Corners because mm. it's 24 hours around tight, twisty mountain roads of Corsica. So the first thing I had to do was learn to drive the car. And I discovered to my immense joy that it wasn't an oversteering monster at all. In fact, basically, it's an understeering car. Even very early ones were. And what you did with it was up to the driver, not up to the car. So I spent 24 hours learning to drive it. I finished third in that first event. And then we went back to Stuttgart and Porsche said, maybe he's right. So still no contract, but at least I was going to get paid for the next event, which was the Monte Carlo rally in 1967. This now is the start of 1967 and a whole year. I finished third on Monte Carlo. Could very easily have won, but I got, they had very um, strange tire regulations in the in regulations that year. And I got caught with the wrong tires on the last stage when it snowed. But I still finished third. So now back to Stuttgart. Now there was enthusiasm. Yeah. What are we going to do next? And the next up was the Geneva Rally. Right. Still part of the European Rally Championship. And I won it. Next up after that was Stuttgart Leon Chavonier Rally. Still currently for the European Championship. And there I started to die, dig into the car itself. Because up until then, nobody knew anything about it. The car was basically a, a production car, a little bit tuned up, but that's all. And then I discovered there were all sorts of extras in a Porsche 911 that other manufacturers didn't have. For a start, we had a five-speed gearbox. Everybody else had four. Mm -hmm. uh, then I discovered that Porsche already, in its original standard form, had numerous different ratios that could be used inside the gearbox. Most manufacturers had four gears, four ratios, that's it. If you wanted to change something, you changed the final drive. Mm -hmm. You couldn't change the other four inside relative to each other. Porsche could. So I started designing, literally designing my own gearboxes with the man who became my very good and trusted friend. His name was Herman Bream. And until that point, he had been the manager responsible for customer service department. Suddenly he found himself building rally cars. So he found himself building rally cars. I found myself working with him designing my own cars. Uh, the first time was the Leon Chabonnier rally, which I won. I had a top speed of 165 miles an hour because it started with a pretty large amount of the rally being decided on a racetrack, a solitude. The next after that was the Tulip Rally, entirely up and down mountains in the south of France. All I needed for that was a top speed of 100 miles an hour. So I had a five-speed gearbox that did 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 
And that was it. Couldn't go any faster. But of course it had shattering acceleration. Um, I won again. Earlier on that year, right after Monte Carlo, the uh, independent television in England, I was still in, living in England, yeah, uh, they created and organized the very first ever Rallycross, which of course is now a well-known international speciality of racing on those conditions. Uh, I didn't have a car to do it in. They would say that after Monte Carlo, you must come to this in a 911. Well, I didn't have one, there wasn't one available, so I went to the importers in England, which was then a private company, and asked if they could lend me one. They said, well, we don't really have one. We'll lend you our show showroom stock demonstrator. So they lent me their showroom stock demonstrator, and I was up against factory Ford rally cars and other things of that, and I won. Mind you, in winning, I, uh, I wasn't very popular with Ford at that point, having left them the year before. My car was assaulted by the Fords throughout. By the time I took it back on Monday morning, this beautiful sharp showroom stock car was dented all around. And they said, well, we can't sell the damn thing now, can we? What are we gonna do with it? So they decided they would turn it into a race car for me to drive. And in those days, it's changed a little bit now, but then the 911, you might recall, had two little seats in the back. So it, it was actually qualified as a touring car or a sedan car for the British Touring Car Racing Championship. So they turned it into a racing car and I won the British Touring Car Championship in it. All of this is one year, 1967, all in the 911. And I finished up by winning Monte Carlo Rally in 1968. So that was one year for a 911, its first year in competition. 